Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. The struggle is real. Some days the page just doesn't go the way you want, but don't give up. So today I'm going to create an art journal page using two TCW, the Crafters Workshop stencils, and a napkin, Chicks in Bunny Meadow. This beautiful napkin, I have wanted to create with it since I got it from Ninny's Napkins. And today is the day. Well, I thought it was going to be today, but it gave me a bit of a struggle. I had so many ideas, I couldn't determine what I wanted. Now this napkin, it works for so many things. You could make a six by six card, a five by seven card. You could use each quadrant separately, or you could open it up and use half the napkin like I'm going to, to fit a sign or an art journal page. So I rough cut it out, the one panel, and then I am simply going to remove the two excess plies. You need to do this or it just, when you start gluing it down, it's gonna come apart and you're gonna end up with a hot mess. Now I spent so much time thinking about this one, overthinking what I was going to do. Was I going to do it on a seven by 10 page or on a canvas or on a tin can? And I had different ways of doing it. And so after a while, I finally said, okay, you know what? Let's just sit down and start. Because once you start, I find things start to flow, ideas start to flow. So what you see me doing here is I am water cutting the excess napkin away. This is going to give a deckled edge that's going to more easily disappear into the background. Now if the napkin background is white like this one is, you can get away with a little bit more, leaving a little bit more, but I like to go close and I find this very zen feeling. I'm leaving in most of the elements at this time and because I will decide on the final composition and I can always cut some off later and you're gonna see me doing that. So here I'm taking off this piece. I like the foliage in between the chicks there, but I, th I have an idea to bring in something more original. So I'm taking that out, but I'm taking inspiration from the composition of the napkin. And I think I'm going to put this off to one side as opposed to the center. I just like the way that looks better. And here I'm just editing out a few more little pieces. Now there's some Easter eggs there. At the end of this video, I'm kind of wish I had taken them out because I didn't really want this to be Easter, more springy, just a fun art journal page. So for the background, I wanted to keep it light because the napkin is fairly light and I wanted it to be the focal. So I'm mixing unbleached titanium and then I'm adding some white gesso just to get some variation into the background. I like having those brush marks. That's just going to add to your background. So I was pretty much done at that time. I didn't know what to do. I had indecision plagued me. So I chose to walk away, close the studio door and come back the next day. And I had a bit of an idea for what to do or I was sure of my pa which path I wanted to take. So here I'm just simply putting some light pencil marks where I'm going to glue the napkin down because I don't want to put any marks there. I don't want to put any modeling paste there. So it's just a very light sketchy mark and I'm going to erase those later on. I have this onion blossom stencil from the crafters workshop. And let me tell you, this one I have used for so much. It has been fireworks in the sky. It makes for nice backgrounds. It's just the right scale and I've used it a lot. So if you're looking for a good basic one. 
Now today I'm going to use light and fluffy modeling paste and the reason I grabbed it was it was the closest and it actually dries faster and I'm still struggling with my creative flow. It just seems to be fighting me. So I'm putting it on a key card and putting it down. Once you get a little bit through the stencil, if the stencil it holds down, it kind of sucks down to the paper and it won't move. But you can tape it down if that helps. If you're struggling with it, I find the consistency of the light and fluffy modeling paste works really well. Just FYI, there are affiliate links to TCW and Ninny's napkins in the description box below, and both of them have a coupon code there you can use. So once I've got a good layer there, I'm just gonna peel off the stencil, and I'm going to give that a quick dry with my heat tool, and I will be washing my stencil, getting the modeling paste. Now, once I've dried it, the stems uh, aren't quite as low down as I need them to go. So I'm opting to put the stencil there and just elongate those stems. Just by putting the modeling paste right there. And then I'm going to dry that. You can take your spatula and, and scrape off anything that got where you don't want it to. So now that everything's dry, I'm going to reposition my focal image. And I like that. I've put something behind the chicks like the original napkin have, but it's a little bit more. And I think I might put one on the side here, but I'm th thinking I'm just going to stencil it with paint. So one's going to be on with texture and one's with paint. Well, that's my plan, but many of my plans did not work out in this video, but don't give up. Do you suffer from creative block sometimes? What do you do to get out of that? I find the best thing is sit yourself down and do something, anything. You have to push through it. So I'm put, gluing this down with fluid matte medium from Liquitex and I'm putting a coat underneath and then on top. Being mindful that the napkin will get very fragile when it's wet. The colors typically get brighter once you put a coat of the matte medium on. So now I wanted to add some interest to my background. So I grab this sink liner and I am brayering on some yellow paint and I'm going to use this as a stamp to make some wavy, subtle lines. Basically, I wanna take the colors that are in the napkin and put it, some of that into the background. That's my idea. That's the reason why I'm doing it and it's a good reason. And I'm, right now I'm kind of liking what's going on. It's very subtle. And then I added some pink ones with the same thing. And I lost the footage because I didn't hit record. And then I stamped with a one of my DIY stamps. And again, didn't hit that. Hit the record button. So you see how the struggle was really there. Now I'm using the colors and I'm just giving a wash of acrylic paint to the chicks, to the eggs, to the grass down below. I want to make sure that my focal image stands out. Right now I'm trying to convince myself that I like the background, that it's very festive, very Easter-like, but I'm not exactly successful. I'm Experience cre experiencing creative frustration right now. So I grab a Ranger blending foam and again, lost footage, but you're gonna see how I do that later on. So 
how I did got the color on the onion blossom stenciling, the modeling paste. You'll be seeing that later on. And here I'm using the dioxazine purple and giving it a wash. So not only was I plagued with creative frustration, I was gifted with technical difficulties as well with lost footage and but I didn't give up. You'd sometimes you just have to keep working through it. I'm adding that purple. I really like how that purple works with the yellow of the chicks, which is why I chose to do the onion blossoms in that color. Although in real life, the alliums that bloom are often that kind of purpley shade. So it all goes. And the uh, onion blossom in, on the bottom right hand side, I just stenciled with dioxazine purple and a makeup sponge. So I'm just giving a wash to the different elements of the napkin. I've thinned the paint down somewhat to do that. Now, gesso is like the undergarment, and I gesso pretty much every page, but it also acts as a great eraser. So don't give up, but grab the gesso. Here, I just wanna knock back all that stamping I did. I have decided that I don't like it. It's competing with my focal image. I don't even like this stenciling. So I am just going to, I'm giving it a wash or three of gesso to knock that back and then I'm going to be thinking what can I do what will make me happy so I'm just using white gesso this is lightening the page a little bit because it, remember I used the unbleached titanium which is kind of a beigey color so this is bright lightening the page which is making my focal image stand out more which I like so I'm giving it a wash of gesso and then I let it dry and then I give it another wash of gesso till I've knocked it back. So now I'm going to use the light and fluffy modeling paste and put that through the stencil once again to get the onion blossom over here. Just like I did with the one in the center, but this one's just a partial one. Now I grab the Ranger blending foam and I'm grabbing magenta, quinacridone magenta and dioxazine purple and getting that on the blending foam and then ever so lightly i'm rubbing it on and look at the magic it's just like poof there we go it brings out the texture it colorizes that modeling paste and makes it just come come to life i'm adding quinacridone magenta because there is a little bit of pink in the focal image napkin the one couple of the eggs so I just wanted to have a bit of that in and around the background. Speaking of the background, I still don't know what I'm going to do. It's not where I want it to be yet. So I just do what I know and you guessed it, I'm not giving up. Now some of the blending foam or the paint is getting not just on the high spots and I like that it's kind of making it look misty just like the onion blossom would in real life put this on in light coats you and come back and add more and build up more color as you need don't try to put too much too quickly because you'll typically make a mess and then I'm doing the same thing with the green for the stems So I've used the modeling paste and the stencil and built up my focal point with that napkin. And now it takes over more of the page. I 
which is one of the reasons I chose to use the 9 by 12 mixed media page because I want it to do more. If I didn't want to add as many elements or expand the focal image, I would have used a smaller page. If I was doing this as a card, it would be a very simple background and I wouldn't be do using the modeling paste per se. So I grab the screen view stencil and the unbleached titanium and I am just stenciling it on. It's kind of tone on tone, very subtle, but it's adding interest to the background. And when I did this, it was like, yes, I'm happy. For the first time, I'm happy with my background. First, I didn't know what to put. Then I did the wrong thing. Then I, you know, erased it with gesso. But right now, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. You can still see some of the waviness um, in the background, some of the stamping that I did but it's very, very knocked back. And this isn't competing with the focal image, but it's adding some interest to it. I am happy. Now I'm using my angle brush and the black acrylic paint and I'm just edging my page. It frames it, it's part of my finishing on pretty much 99.9% .9 of all the projects that I do. I look in my sentiment packs and I grab this one that said Believe and Achieve. It comes from the Embrace Possibilities sentiment pack that is that are available for digital download from Ninny's Napkins and I'm bubble cutting it. I cut off half of it because I don't want that part. I just want the word believe. And I chose this one because it's a bold font and it's about the right size to fit my composition. I'm gluing that down with gel medium and making sure the napkin is completely down. I grabbed this clear stamp. It has this kind of mesh look, one of my fast favorites. It's a newest, newer stamp to my collection and I have reached for this one numerous times. It's just the right scale, just adds that little something extra without taking over anything or being in your face. I'm not putting it on a block because I'm not looking for a perfect stamp. And it kind of that goes very well with the screen view stencil loving it now the font that i used wasn't solid and i thought it would look better if it was solid black so i just grabbed some of my black acrylic paint and my liner brush now here's the secret you want to thin down the paint kind of like the consistency of what you might splatter or maybe a little bit thicker and i'm using the liner brush to fill that in and make it solid Alternatively, you can use your Posca pan and fill it in or any marker. I grab some dioxazine purple, thin it down a little bit, and I'm going to splatter. I'm trying to avoid, I don't want to really put the purple splatters on the chicks. I just want it in the top half. And I do splatter with gold, but technology still kind of cursed me and I lost the footage. So here is the finished page. It was quite a journey. I'm glad I didn't give up. I'm so happy with the end result. Thank you so much for joining me. Close-ups of the final page, follow. Until next time, go get creative.